Do you remember the joy of interactive storybooks? You would turn the page and discover a map you could unfold or a hidden door you could open. What if you brought that same magic to your story? Today, we're going to talk about 15 easy ways you can create interactive elements in your journals, scrapbooks, and sketchbooks to bring a new dimension to your memories. And yes, I'll be sharing countless examples from my own journals. So grab your notebooks and let's get started. One of my favorite ways to encourage interaction with the entries in my journals is by adding tip-ins. A tip-in is essentially any element that you are adding to your journal entry that is not directly adhered to the page and instead is added to the entry using a hinge-like system. Typically, people create this hinge using tape. I like to use decorative washi tape. And this creates a double-sided element that can fold out and provide more room for you to journal, add photos, or other ephemera. Since I have a more scrapbook style and love to use lots of photos in my journaling and memory keeping, it's very common for me to use tip-ins as a way of being able to add all of those additional photos while still having room for me to write and do my journaling. There are also times when I use tip-ins because I forgot something I wanted to add to the page, or I wanted to show a before and after, or because I wanted to be able to provide a his and hers look at what happened. I also love to use different items for my tip-ins, whether that's postcards or memorabilia or even maps. It's also a great way to add ephemera, like tickets from travel, or the movies, or a concert that you attend. Ultimately, there are no rules to tip-ins. You can add as many as you want to a page. You can try different sizes and styles, and get creative with the types of items that you might want to add to your journal in this way. A creative way you can expand upon the idea of adding tip-ins is to create peekaboo moments in which your tip-in is actually a kind of opaque window to what lays beneath. I love doing this with quotes or recipes where what I'm talking about then is a photo underneath. This also works well when you want to hide one portion of a photo, but then still want to be able to access the rest of the photo when you lift up the tip in. You can also incorporate these peekaboo moments for items that you want to include on the page, but maybe don't like the way the aesthetic works with the rest of your entry. Another great way to hide something on the page is by having doors. This is basically, again, a tip-in, so we're just expanding on that first idea. But in this case, instead of the tip-in providing additional room, it is providing a door or a cover for what lays beneath. This can be beneficial when you potentially want to hide what lays beneath or because you want a grand reveal. And of course, a journal would not be a home without doors and windows, so I also love to incorporate tip-ins that have a see-through element that can make what is underneath part of the entire experience. This is really great when you have decorative clear elements where you're adding ephemera and other items on top of the element, but then have a beautiful window to the larger picture that lays beneath. You can also create a literal window in your journal that will open and close, and I have a free printable for you over on my Patreon so that you can cut out these windows and use them in your own journal. Essentially, the idea here is that you are going to have a nice double-sided window, in this case with curtains that will frame your image underneath, and then by cutting out the middle, you will have a see-through element that is going to reveal when you open it the fuller picture. So in this case, I just put a little bumblebee image underneath 
and then I'm attaching my window with a piece of tape and then the window can open and close over that image. I love this idea and was actually recently reminded of it while taking a class on Skillshare, which is the sponsor of today's video. If you want to take the class along with me, it is called Bring Your Sketchbook to Life by Samantha Dion Baker, who is the author of Draw Your Day and Draw Your World. And her examples and ideas gave me so much inspiration. I especially loved her idea of creating a little pocket of fries and then of course the window. And her class is just one example of the many available on Skillshare that I have personally enjoyed. If you are not already familiar with Skillshare, it is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes that are led by industry experts across film and illustration and design, productivity, and basically any hobby you could possibly want to learn. Summer for me is a great time where I feel a little bit more free to invest in my creativity and give myself time to try new hobbies. And maybe you feel the same way. So whatever it is you are interested in pursuing, I can guarantee you will find a class on Skillshare. And the best part is you can try it right now because the first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. So get started today. And thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring. Another very easy and fun add-in for your journal is to put in things that will fold out, like little cards or even a card that you get from a friend, brochures that fold out and invite you to look more deeply. Even something like a clothing tag that folds open can be a great addition for your journal. A foldout can even be incorporated into the entire entry, like this example, where I glued down half of a piece of tissue paper and then had the bottom half fold up to reveal what's underneath. And then I love this final example of a foldout of the map of the battlefield of Gettysburg that has more of an accordion fold so you can pull it open and it reveals the full map as well as provides additional space for photos and journaling. One of my favorite interactive elements is creating mini albums and books within my journal. So it's kind of like journal inception. And there's so many ways you can do this. You could create a mini book of your favorite quotes from a novel. You could create a little journal like this one that reveals a quote or a nugget of wisdom as you fold out the pages. This example is actually one that we created in a live stream. So I'll have that linked for you if you want to see exactly how to do it. I also have tons of examples where I do essentially multiple tip-ins to create a mini album that showcases all different photos in my journal. And then one final example is creating a year in review, a little mini book at the end of your journal to capture the highlights. When an entry needs a little dose of fun, this is the category you want to refer to. One of my favorite fun items for an entry is a waterfall card that uses a mechanism that allows you to push the cards and they kind of just follow in sequence like a waterfall. I have two tutorials here on my channel that show you exactly how to create this waterfall card and Essentially, it's a lot easier than it looks. You're going to have one side of a piece of paper that attaches to your journal, and then you're going to create an accordion fold that you attach your little cards to, and that is how you create the mechanism. Like I said, there are tutorials that will show you exactly how to do it that you can watch next. Once you try it, you are going to be wanting to make waterfall cards for every entry. Another favorite is this system that is very reminiscent of children's books where you are told to pull something and you are moving it across the page. 
This was super fun to create and I also have a journal with me that will show you exactly how to do it so that you can move whatever it is that is going to fit your memories on the page, whether that's up and down or left and right. You will have so much fun with this interactive element, both creating it and playing with it later. And then one final very easy example is using a staple and then putting a piece of string with something attached to it with a little bead on the end that will stop the piece from going all the way through so that you can pull it up and down over your journaling or reveal a photo underneath. This mechanism also makes a great little bookmark for your journal as well, which is our next topic. I love to use string and pretty ribbons to attach items to my page and let them feel a little bit more loose and organic, but still have them be part of the entry. This works great for things like this bracelet that I received from a group while in Ecuador and wanted to save and now also acts as a bookmark for that entry, but also is great for things like a tag from a tea bag. This one had a quote on it and I wanted to add it to my journal, so I just used washi to attach it to the page and turned it into a little tea bag right on the entry. Let me know in the comments if you ever keep tea tags for your journal. If you have been around for a while, then you knew I couldn't get through this video without also talking about shaker cards. I love shaker cards for a super fun, interactive element that just adds such whimsy to your entry. They are surprisingly easy to make. All you need is a little clear pocket like this one. Typically, they are used for protecting individual photos, but when you seal them together, you can actually seal in glitter and sequins that then can shake around and be moved for a really cool effect. I love decorating these envelopes with stickers as well, and also use them to protect pieces of nature that I have preserved as well. This was a great addition for this entry about snow geese where I threw in a few feathers, not from the actual geese, but from a feather pillow in my house and it created a beautiful addition to this title. It is impossible to talk about interactive journaling without mentioning pockets. I love creating pockets. I have so many pockets throughout my journals and they are one of the best interactive elements because it is something everyone immediately recognizes and understands how to interact with. Just pull out what's inside and it's like a little surprise or gift that you get to open each time. I love creating pockets where I actually use a photo collage that creates the pocket and then inside is my journaling, either on a tag or a journaling card. I also store other little items in my pockets that are pieces of memorabilia. You can also create pockets from found items like an envelope from your tea, I use tea bags all the time to create pockets. It's really fun to look at reusable and recyclable items that are already in a pocket form that you can then just put directly into your journal. A coffee sleeve is another great example. All you have to do is seal up the bottom and then leave the top open to slip in whatever you have in mind to save and cherish. Pockets are also great when what you want to include on the entry maybe doesn't go with the vibe as much, so you want to have it a little bit hidden but still accessible. You might also like to use pockets when you just have a beautiful design in mind but want to have somewhere to store your journaling or maybe it's a more private note and you don't necessarily want it out in the open. I love doing that for journaling that I want to keep a little bit more secret and private. It also is a great space for any memorabilia and items that you collect from trips. 
These are just a few of the examples I have from recent travel where I saved photos and all types of items in a pocket. You also can use them as a hidden pocket where maybe it's not even obvious that there's a pocket, but you know that deep inside there is something hiding away. As you get creative with your pockets, I also encourage you to get creative with what you put inside the pockets too. You don't always have to make a full-blown pocket, but instead can use a spot that just isn't fully adhered to the page as a tuck spot for you to slip in another item like a tag or journaling card. I love doing this when I have a piece of ripped paper or other items where I just will keep part of it loose where I can slip in additional materials. This is a great example where I kept the tree border loose so that way you could slip any items under the trees and they would act as a way of holding those items into the entry while also allowing them to be pulled out and looked at and revealing what is underneath. In this case, I had a whole lot I wanted to journal about, but also then it could include lots of photos. Another way you can add additional elements to your entry in an interactive way is by using envelopes. You can use this just like you would an envelope for a letter, glue the back to your page, and then tuck in any type of journaling or notes or photos that you want to save. This works really well for items that you don't necessarily want to be out in the open on your entry, but still want to include and be able to access. I'd love to know what the most unique thing you've put in an envelope is in your journal. While it's always great to adhere things directly to the page, like all of the examples I've shared so far, there are also times where I just tuck an item into the page and let it be loose in the journal. This is especially great for cards that I've received. The Valentine's note that my husband makes me every year gets tucked in for my February month in review entry. I often find this the easiest way to add an interactive element when I realize that maybe I forgot something I wanted to include. I can just tuck it between the pages and be able to still pull it out later and interact with it. One thing you might not realize is an interactive element is anything that is shiny, metallic, or glitters because these items actually encourage you to move the journal around and change your perception of it and how it is reflected in the light so that you can perceive it in a new way. It's so fun to have those pages pop up where you can't help but to want to move the journal around and be able to see how the paint or the sticker or the metallic paper comes to life in a new way. Another great example are images that actually move when you change the orientation. This is called lenticular printing and you can actually find stickers and postcards with this type of image on them that will encourage you to move your journal, interact with it, and look at it from a new perspective. For me, a journal is meant to be tactile. I want to touch it with my hands and feel the textures on the page. So I love adding anything to my journal that is going to encourage that type of interaction rather than a look but don't touch. I love to explore my memories with all five senses when possible and touch is a really important one. So whether that's with ribbons and strings or adding fabrics for a different feel and texture to the page. I also love adding items from nature like feathers and any items that encourage touch and interaction. You can really get creative. 
Now that we have covered a whole ton of ideas and examples, I want to show you how I put them all together with some example entries from my journals in which I use multiple different types of interactive elements. In this case, you see me using a pocket for a business card as well as a tip-in. This item here is another tip-in where I have then a pocket that has a little card for the fact that we went to get bubble tea. I also love this little mini album I created for a day kayaking on the water. And this was a really special day because the following day, we actually got engaged. So I had a tip-in that revealed the photo for a grand reveal of our proposal scene. And then in that envelope, I tucked in a entire write-up of everything that happened that day because I knew I wanted the entire story recorded as well as a few private notes. This entry is a continuation of our engagement day in which I used lots of interactive elements including these loose pieces that were a ribbon from the ring box and a piece of the shirt I wore that day. I also included the flowers that were on the table in a shaker card and added the note Ben used to ask me to marry him as a tip-in. This next example uses a basic tip-in as well as a peekaboo moment and some beautiful metallic foiling. This example also has a peekaboo moment with this gorgeous vellum paper overlaying the entry. And then I also added this great dangle with a date that I wasn't able to fit onto the page. So I was able to continue it just by adding a piece of washi with the string and the little card. And now we have all of the dates on one page. I love this interactive entry where I actually turned the tip-in itself into a pocket and created it out of the tickets for the show that we went to see. I was able to add a ton more photos by using a tip-in as well. Here we have a great little tuck-in spot for a little card that had some additional journaling on it. And then we have a nice peekaboo moment in which we're able to see the kettle underneath and the journaling over top. This is a great example of adding a mini album to an entry to include lots of photos at one time. And then I also have lots of examples here of foldouts and pockets to keep all of my travel memorabilia. And this is one of my favorite ways to think about pockets is just as that storage spot for all the items that maybe are double-sided or different shapes that need to be folded that wouldn't work to add directly onto the page, but you still want to save and include. And that's what I did here with all of these items related to our trip. This is a really sweet entry that honors Ben's grandfather who passed, and I have a loose item tucked away from the funeral and also this really cute deer die cut from the following day where we saw one out in the woods, and I just attached it as a tip-in with a piece of washi. I love this entry because I have multiple foldouts within a whole additional page added into the journal, and then this great pocket was created using the fan that was given to us at this event, and then I was able to stick in photos and have our ticket in that pocket while having space underneath to write my journaling. And one final example includes a fold-out card from a friend, as well as a pressed flower that was given to me and is now saved forever here in my journal. Plus a little tea bag pocket for good measure. So those are all of the ideas that I have for you with so many examples, but there are so many other ways that you can incorporate interaction in your journaling. I encourage you to explore your options. Let us know some of your favorite ideas in the comments. And then I would love to have you join the abiding fam by hitting the subscribe button and be sure to check out this playlist next for more ideas or you might like my most recent video.